What do you think Superman and Lois Lane will be remembered for? I'd like to think truth and justice. And a better tomorrow. Alright, what is going on guys, it's Taz here, and welcome back to the channel. It truly is the end of an era, Superman and Lois aired its series finale with the 10th episode of season 4, titled It Went By So Fast, and such a fitting title it was. Monday night, December 2nd, Superman and Lois sadly came to an end after four incredible seasons, and with it, DC TV on the CW and the Arrowverse that was created over a decade ago. This season followed the death of Superman and reign of the Superman storylines from the comics with its own Superman and Lois spin. Lex Luthor was out for vengeance against Lois Lane for sending him to prison for 17 long years, keeping him from his daughter and tarnishing his reputation and legacy. In retaliation, he created Doomsday from the corpse of Bizarro Superman, which led to Clark's death and a subsequent resurrection thanks to General Lane's sacrifice. After Superman's return, we got an incredible character study of Clark Kent and what it truly means to have been Superman for as long as he has. How important his mission to protect the world from threats is, and how tough it is to balance that while also being as present as he can with his family. While Lex continues to advance his plans in Smallville and slowly become less and less stable, Lois exhausts each and every lead she can to try and expose the truth and put Luther back where he belongs. After Clark is forced to reveal his identity to the world, the tone shifts quite a bit, showing us a side of the Superman story that no other form of media had tackled before. Both John and Jordan must learn to balance their normal lives, which have now been irreversibly changed with Clark's revelation, but to also embrace this incredible power they both have and how powerful they can be together as the Super Sons or Fraternals as they call themselves. Leading into the finale, Clark was faced with the reality that he was becoming more human each and every day, losing more and more of his power due to his now human heart. All the while, Lex continued to grow his empire and weaponry with the help of Amanda and Milton Fine, aka Brainiac, stealing John Henry's suit and powering up Doomsday for the final battle ahead. Huge spoiler warning for the entirety of Superman and Lois's final season, but with that out of the way, let's fly right into this episode breakdown one last time. The finale picks up right where we left off in the penultimate episode, in the heat of the battle between Clark and Doomsday, as Lois and the boys do everything they can to help the people of Smallville from the ground. Checking in with John Henry and Lana, they discuss the difficulties of not always seeing the people they care most about. This sweet date and heart-to-heart -heart discussion is cut short, however, when Superman and Doomsday bring the fight to them. While Clark continues the fight of his life against Doomsday, Lois gives the boys the go-ahead to jump into the fray. Clark orders the Super Sons to focus on Smallville and saving the people in trouble there, while he tries his hand at drawing Doomsday out of the town. Lois blames Amanda for everything that is unfolding as she knew what Lex was planning and only backed out when he truly went off the deep end. I absolutely loved the shot of John and Jordan saving the helicopter pilot as the chopper crashes to the ground, and Lois just casually action heroes it up, hiding from the blast behind a brick pillar. The fight comes back to the center of town, and Doomsday is laying the beat down on Clark. Lois directs the boys to intervene, where they do their signature heat vision team up attack. This distracts the creature enough to fly after the Super Sons, allowing Clark time to recover before getting back into the fight. Lois and Clark have a heated and emotional heart-to-heart -heart about whether Jonathan and Jordan are really ready for the responsibility that comes with truly being Superboys. Lois ensures Clark that the boys have each other and they have their father, and that is going to have to be enough. While John and Jordan fly Doomsday around the outskirts of Smallville, John Henry and Lana show up equipped with gear and a plan. 
Clark tells the boys to draw Doomsday back to Main Street, where we get one of the coolest action sequences of the episode. Doomsday flies in, fists flying, and Clark does his super slow-mo dodge, leaving enough room for John Henry to throw his kinetic hammer, killing the beast at least temporarily. With Doomsday incapacitated, Clark takes this as his opportunity to fly him into the sun in order to destroy the creature permanently, as being from Bizarro World means that he's weak to the yellow sun, whereas Clark could use it to supercharge himself as he has to prepare for one last fight. Everyone strategizes about how to handle the remaining threat, that of course being Lex Luthor. In his Lexo suit, Luthor catches up with Amanda who is trying to flee Smallville, but he's not going to let her get away that easily. She's deeply hurt by his betrayal, however, Lex, as we've come to learn throughout this season, shows absolutely no remorse for what he's done or plans to do, attempting to deal with one more loose end. John and Jordan swoop in at the last minute to save Amanda and bring her back to the Gazette to speak with Lois. With Amanda's cooperation, Lois devises a plan on how to expose Luther as the true villain, broadcasting it to the world. Up in space, Clark arrives at the sun with the doomsday, however, he's stopped right before he can land the killing blow on the creature. Doomsday reaches his hand out, signaling Clark to stop and that it's okay. Bizarro Superman is still in there somewhere, and you can see the pain and distraught in his eyes. Doomsday knows exactly what he has done and the horror that he has caused, and finally lets go, allowing himself to be pushed into the blazing star. The tragedy of the Bizarro World Superman will go down as one of the best in the entire series. Back on the ground, Lois tries to start her broadcast when it is interrupted by Milton Fine and the arrival of Lex Luthor, blasting Jonathan into the hotel building and pinning Jordan to the pavement. Clark can hear the struggle from the sun as he's powering up, ready to return and face his greatest foe. Lois stands up to Luther, calling him out for everything he's done, going after her family over a petty grudge he holds against her. I'm not afraid of you, but you are terrified of me. Lex screams at Lois, telling her that she can't stop him. No, but he can, as Superman triumphantly flies back to Smallville, snatching up Luther and beginning the true final battle. Another beautiful brother moment as Jordan goes to check on Jonathan who had been completely knocked out by Luther. Jordan does some sort of supersonic CPR to revive his brother and we get the most heartwarming bro hug of all time. Lex gets the upper hand early on with his kryptonite screws as Milton happily watches the death of Superman. That is until his lab is raided by John Henry and the DoD. John Henry Irons uses his aggressive negotiation skills as revenge for stealing his suit, convincing Milton to return power to Smallville so that Lois can broadcast the truth about Luther. Up in the sky, Clark channels all of his energy to rip out the kryptonite screws lodged in his chest, also showing us his suit even has a healing factor. Luther threatens to kill Clark and his entire family, to which Clark responds that Lex will never hurt another person. He's come after his wife, his sons, his town, and now Superman is finally going to stop him. The epic fight continues leading up to one of the coolest shots from throughout the entire series. Clark flies at Lex and supersonic punches him completely out of his armor. As Luther falls back down to Smallville, Clark is there to catch him right before he hits the ground, having it all caught on camera by Lana and Amanda. Clark embraces his family, happy that this long nightmare is finally behind them. Lex Luthor has officially been defeated. Flash forward to one year later, John Henry and Lana are getting married at the Kent farm. Everyone is there to celebrate the joining of these two incredible people. Lois gives the most heartwarming speech about both her friends, calling Lana the best of Smallville and John Henry a true man of steel. And to the post-wedding reception, we get to touch base with Kyle and Chrissy, where we learn that they are having yet another child and the worry that will come with her having to handle three boys. Kyle and Lana seem to finally reconcile, both happy for one another, that they have both found what truly makes them happy in their respective relationships. 
Over on the porch, Jordan and Sarah have one final moment together where she tells him that spending the year abroad makes her realize that Smallville is not where she's meant to be, while Jordan, on the other hand, is exactly where he wants to be and is meant to be. John Henry and Natalie have a beautiful father-daughter moment, looking off into the distance, reminiscing on where they came from and how where they are now truly feels like home. Back in the house, Clark longingly looks up at the It Went By So Fast plaque on the wall as Lois comes in to check on him. They think about what the next chapter of their lives have in store and discuss what they think the world will remember them for, to which Lois responds, truth and justice, and Clark adds, a better tomorrow. In that moment, Lois gets the notification that Luther was denied his appeal and he's going back to Strikers for life. Clark and Lois finally won. Back in prison, Lex voices his concerns about the conditions of his stay, and unfortunately the same arrangements as last time will not be possible. Things have changed around Strikers and Luther's absence, Bruno Mannheim is the man in charge, and he needs a good chair. And you, Alexander, you're going to make a hell of a chair. The first time Clark died, he described it as nothing but darkness, but then he came back, and thanks to Sam's sacrifice, Clark lived for 32 more years. The world he came back to, however, wasn't the same that he left. After Luther was defeated, Clark focused on his legacy and what he wanted to leave behind. He knew he couldn't do it alone. Enter the super family. John and Jordan finally get their suits and we got hands down my favorite shots in the entire series with Clark and his boys suited up flying high in the sky along with Steel and Starlight with their rightful House of El crests and John Henry even finally got his cape. With help from his family, good friends, and even former enemies like Bruno Mannheim, Clark was able to really help fix the world after all this time only focusing on saving it. Lois and Clark opened up a charity foundation, and with it, they were able to make a real difference, push for true change, and give people the hope that had been missing for far too long. And now, this final stretch of the episode with Clark's voiceover, we get to learn about the rest of his life at home with Lois. They were able to grow old together on the farm, watch Jonathan and Jordan grow up, and even have a family of their own, complete with a ton of super grandchildren to carry on Superman's legacy. Super cool little easter egg, the grown-up version of Jonathan was actually played by Bitsy Tullock's real-life husband, who had also directed an episode this season. It's also not explicitly stated, but John and Jordan's wives, I'm thinking it's left up to interpretation of the audience. Did they eventually end up with Candace and Sarah respectively, or did they find a new love? I guess the canon on that front can be whatever you feel is best as a fan of the show, and personally, I'd like to think that as well. It was immensely beautiful to see this older version of Lois and Clark, hearing how it was a magical time and that every day was better than the last because they never spent a day apart. That was until Lois's cancer returned, and this time it was sadly too much for her to handle, leading to her ultimate passing. And this was the moment in the episode that truly broke me. I'm not afraid to admit I started crying like a baby, and even now I'm getting a bit choked up just talking about it here. After Lois's passing, Clark was by himself, that is, until he got a dog, Crypto. They took lots of walks, lots of naps, and watched lots of sunsets together. The years Clark shared with Crypto meant a lot, but sadly, time started catching up to him as he had a heart attack in the same place he originally lost his father. The second time Clark died was so much different from the first, he was surrounded by his boys. Clark couldn't explain the feeling that washed over him once he finally passed, but then he realized it was what life was all about. Joy, hope, forgiveness, wonder, friendship, family, and most importantly, love. When Clark arrived on Earth, he was alone, but now leaving it, he had so much and it was all because of love. He realized that love is what makes life worth living, and as he's reunited with his love, Lois standing there in the light. As the score swells up, Clark Kent's final message is to give and hold on to love because life, it goes by so fast. 
Overall, guys, Superman and Lois gave us the perfect finale to one of the best DC TV shows of all time. This finale evoked so much emotion, I loved the message that life is amazing and beautiful and unpredictable, but also delicate and limited. You need to make the most out of this one chance you get, spend as much time as you can with the ones you love, and when you have the power to help, do so. It was also super powerful to have Clark forgive Lex after all of the pain he caused him and his family. Also a perfect final touch having Clark's shirt in the afterlife being the exact same one from the series premiere episode as he's reunited with Lois in the famous red dress. Not only was this series far and away above the quality bar of what you traditionally come to expect in its cinematography, story, and production value, but it told such a beautiful story about the most powerful hero and his humanity. Superman may have been what he did, but Clark Kent is who he was. Tyler Hecklin brought such a nuance to the role of both Clark and Superman that we had never experienced before, truly embodying the character which was paired perfectly with Bitsy Tulloch as Lois Lane, allowing us to see a vastly different perspective on a character that had been around for such a long time. Tyler and Bitsy gave these roles absolutely everything they had over these last four seasons, and we'd leave off having experienced the definitive versions of these characters, laying the blueprint for what is possible with this mythos in the future. This show also gave us my favorite version of Lex Luthor, played by Michael Cudlitz, two incredible superboys in Jonathan and Jordan Kent, played by Michael Bishop and Alex Garfin, respectively. Wole Parks as John Henry Irons, along with his daughter Natalie, played by Taylor Buck, Emmanuel Shrieky as Lana Lang, Kyle Cushing, played by Eric Valdez, and their daughter Sarah Cushing, played by Andy Navarrete. I know I didn't name everyone here, but this entire cast and crew deserve all of the praise in the world for this wonderfully crafted series. Showrunner Todd Helbing really gave us the greatest piece of Superman media of all time, taking the character in new directions and deconstructing a character study that I never thought possible. After this finale, the era of DC TV on the CW with the Arrowverse has now officially come to an end, and as sad as I am to see it go, I am so grateful for this amazing world that I was given the privilege of peering into on a weekly basis for the last 12 years. As much as I would have loved the series to continue and go with that original seven season plan, expanding on Brainiac, bringing in Darkseid, and whatever else the creatives had planned, I'm still so happy with the four stellar seasons we received. Don't be sad that it's over, be thankful that it happened, and the legacy it leaves behind, because as Clark said, it went by so fast. So, with that said guys, just let me know your thoughts on the Superman and Lois series finale down there in the comments below. Did this show come to a satisfying conclusion for you? What would you have hoped to see if the show were to have continued with that original 7 season plan? And what is your favorite memory from the series or just the Arrowverse in general? Let me know your thoughts on all of this down there in the comments below. But until next time guys... It's been Taz, and I'll see you guys in the next video.